Yes, is Glenn Niels, the uh, director of worldwide marketing for high comp uh, performance computing, the Echopod, all the high end systems. Welcome to theCUBE. Hi, uh, thanks. Okay, so we're going to jump. I know you're really busy. You have an 11 o'clock panel that you're doing. You guys are really busy, growing like crazy. Big accounts you guys service. So, first question is um, what's going on in the show? You have the Ecopod and you have other um, announcements happening. What's happening here at HP Discover for, in your world? Yeah, so in my world, um, first off, it, in the, in the converged infrastructure world, actually HP world, it's all about agility, okay? Um, uh, we've got three key announcements uh, in the enterprise storage, servers, and networking uh, and technical services group. Uh, first is around um, uh, uh, new uh, storage architectures, uh, really, really cool architectures, cloud architectures, some new um, scale-out storage uh, devices. Uh, second is around uh, cloud system, app system, and virtual system. And then I, the thing I'm most proud of, and I think is actually the biggest news, is the Ecopod announcement. Um, we call it Converged Data Centers, and this builds upon you know, years of history and leadership and innovation um, in providing modular data centers. Uh, the Ecopod is really a, a, a breakthrough new category in the pod family um, designed to accelerate the adoption of modular data centers uh, worldwide to more types of usage models and more customers than just the hyperscale and, and special use case models. Let's talk about this pod tech that you guys have, the technology behind the pod. So, love the word pod tech. Uh, you know, <laughs> my former life, that was my old domain name that I had. But uh, talk about the Ecopod, because there's people out there that have had different approaches like this, or similar approaches. You know, Rackable was out there, and everything on the rack side. You have containers and data centers. and yep. There's been some stuff like that, dropping in data centers. Tell us what's new about the Ecopod pod specifically and what, why it's different than other approaches? Well, let's first build on, you, you talk about containers, okay? Um, pods in general are so much more than containers. Po containers are like 2007, okay? Um, what is that, almost five years ago? It's like a um, decade in cloud years. Sure, back in those days, HP was in the, in the vanguard of introducing con a containerized modular approach um, for special use cases, temporary facilities, et cetera. We saw that market taking off. We took it to the next level, and while our pods, our chilled water pods, 20C and 40C, 20 feet and 40 feet, um, they still have the shape of a container, but they are nowhere near a container, okay? Um, they're more modular, they're more efficient, they're more cost effective, and that allows us to deliver them in weeks as opposed to months, in some cases, years. Um, we've moved well beyond containers even before today, okay? Last year, we, in fact, shipped, um, uh, to one customer alone, we shipped 22 pods containing 40,000 servers, storage and networking and other converged infrastructure, all custom configured for their specific environment and tested in 22 pods in nine weeks, okay? We built upon that and built the, built the first factory or assembly line for data centers, and that was HP Pod Workers, Podworks. We announced that in October. What we saw, oh, about this time last year, maybe a little bit earlier, as customers started to cross the chasm, okay, uh, from early adopters to mainstream adoption. Um, modular data centers aren't just for those customers that are deploying tens and twenties and forty thousand dollars servers at a time. More industries. We have pod implementations in four out of seven continents, in a broad range of industries from oil and gas, retail, manufacturing, not just web monsters, not just high performance computing. But those customers said, hey, we need you to make it even more affordable. We need you to make it even more energy efficient. Um, you still need to deliver it in weeks, but we also want that traditional data center look and feel, especially from a serviceability model. We don't want to either have to move a rack to get to the hot aisle. You inter can introduce all kinds of user errors, service interruptions, et cetera. Or I don't want to have to crawl into a hot aisle in order to uncable or, or work the rear of the, uh, of the infrastructure. Um, so we took that same modular approach. Uh, we applied um, new cooling technologies, including HP um, adaptive cooling technology. We kept the modular approach where we have things that look like containers sandwiched up to a um, eight foot extra wide uh, uh, hot aisle, shared hot aisle. So we've got maximum density with a no compromise approach to serviceability. You don't have to crawl in a hot aisle anymore, okay? Uh, packs 10,000 square feet uh, of a data center into basically 900 square feet. Um, 44 industry standard racks, all 50U. We, it works better with HP, conversed infrastructure, but you can put whatever um, uh, customer furnished equipment you want in there. Um, and with HP adaptive cooling technology, it gets to PUE down of 1 .0, to as low as 1.05, but more importantly, it intelligently adjusts itself. Customers can dial in their policy, and then based on climate and IT load, a couple of other factors, the system automatically modulates itself to get the maximum cooling efficiency pos possible. Make sense? Totally does. Alex, you got some footage of that. I mean, what's yeah. your take on this? 
Yeah, I'm curious about you know what you're just saying about the um, about that rating. Is that the lowest in the industry? Because I, I, I I'm hearing it's not actually. It's you mean 1.05? Yeah. Um, we're quoting 1.05. Once you get down below 1.1, yeah, um, you're dealing in infinitesimally small approaches to perfection. We can get lower than that okay. in, a, in a corner case. Right. Uh, so can someone else. Right. Okay, in using um, uh, free air. Right. Uh, the key is getting down there and being able to sustain it with the the intelligence and being able to modify what your cooling methods is from uh, cooling method is from free air cooling mm -hmm. to direct assist mm -hmm. uh, or direct expansion assist to full DX. So uh, what, one of the things I'm, I'm getting to is this is a very competitive market. Mm -hmm. And this is a bit of a horse race. And you know, we're seeing a high degree of commoditization you know, in the data center world with, you know, with, you know, with servers and such, right? It really, the, the innovation is rising up the stack to some degree. Mm -hmm. So you know, how do you guys position yourselves in such a horse race where there is such a crowded market? Innovation and solving customer problems first. Um, we're not a, we're not new to this horse race, as you call it. Um, we started out in in the container game. We've elevated the innovation, the efficiency, the affordability, the speed and velocity of deployment. Um, uh, we have taken it more mainstream, allowing more customers to adopt it, just outside of special use cases. And now we've taken it to a, a, the next level with the world's most efficient. It's not just about 1.05. Can you get it in 12 weeks? Can you get all of that IT configured to your needs? In 12 weeks, so you've really you've really ratcheted up that assembly line style production. For it's it's it's, data end to, it's end to end. It's you can get it in 12 weeks. You've got end to end support from planning, design, installation, ongoing services. You've got one of the most innovative max density, max efficiency, while still as low as a quarter of the cost compared to brick and mortar. Okay, all of that combined end to end. Um, brings a new level of innovation. Again, allowing more customers to adopt a modular data center approach. They've put off investment in new data center facilities. Brick and mortar approaches are too costly, they take too long, and they use too much energy. Okay, um, so you say they put it off. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd love to see some examples of that, how they're putting it off. And secondly, okay. can you point to some specific use cases mm -hmm. You know, for for this new type of uh, modular data center. Absolutely. So, um, first off, talk about to put it off. Between 2007 and 2010, new data center capacity expansion spending dropped 37 percent. We all know why. Uh, we we've been in a terrible economic recession. Um, uh, between 2010 to 2014, that new data center capacity requirements are now expected to double. Yeah. Okay. Um, Customers need a solution for that, and they need to not have to look into a crystal ball to figure out what are their IT requirements, business requirements, et cetera, going to be in five, seven, right. ten years. They need to tie or integrate their facilities purchasing, planning, deployment, even retirement to their IT. Okay. Um, now, what was the second part of your question? Use cases. Use, use cases. cases. Yeah, there's a variety of use cases. I'll, 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 I'll touch on chilled water pods as, as, as an example, um, and then we'll talk about uh, Ecopod. So here's a, here's a perfect use case. Um, actually, I'll give you two in, in pods. One is uh, um, a, a customer that uh, is out of space, um, and they're actually putting chilled, but they have an, an, an existing investment in chilled mm -hmm. water plants. Mm -hmm. They're putting chilled water pods, 40-foot chilled water pods, up on top of their roof. They're in a fairly warm environment, okay? And that they, have to, they get to take advantage of their existing investments, both in space, no, no additional real property uh, needed, existing investments in chiller uh, plants, um, and still be able to get that efficiency down to around a 1.2. And for a really, really warm environment, I'm talking really, really warm, um, that's really, really good, okay? Um, other um, uh, use cases are uh, manufacturing uh, and design. So we have a, a customer in Europe, large manufacturing design firm. What they do is they have all of their, their uh, engineering design, modeling, all of those tools that their engineers and designers use to create the products that they create or that they manufacture. Um, they had that all located in a pod, all right? And they've, they've built that out over the past, I guess, two years since uh, we launched our uh, Proliant Gen 6 uh, servers. Um, they, now they're at, they're at about capacity, okay? But the real cool thing there, and they've got lower efficiency, or excuse me, they've got greater uh, energy efficiency, lower cost, they've got great productivity. Um, the interesting use case here, though, is that when, they, when it's time to move to the next generation of ProLiant infrastructure, and usually the average refresh rate is about every 3.7 years, as opposed to having tractor trailers backing, backing up with boxes and contractors wiring and cabling and you're worried about service level interruptions, et cetera, they have 
additional concrete pads right next to their existing uh, pod facilities. The pod backs up on a truck, fully configured, puts, gets put down on the pad, connect water, power, and network. Workloads get migrated over, same truck's still there, pulls out the old IT in less than three days. So that's a great usage model for, uh, for pods as a whole. Overall, you look at data center expansion, look at uh, temporary facilities, mm -hmm. and then now with Ecopod, even new data center facilities. I encourage you to go look at the cityscape where you see a campus building uh, with an access spine with uh, Ecopods hooked up, little bitty vestibule, uh, hooked up to the um, uh, access spine as a perfect use, use uh, model for a new data center build out. Uh, we got. I know you got a short yep. window. We got a couple minutes left. But my my final question, then Alex, you maybe want to ask one final question. That's cool. So, data center, eco, ecopod to me is the data center in a box. You ship mm -hmm. in the old days. You ship the server, set in the rack. Well, clients have these like servers. I mean, like because the cloud is all about. We hear from David Scott, IT as a service. Kind of take the footprint and kind of make it smaller. For the data center. So, talk about the future of data centers. Future, um, as 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 we look today at data center facilities, the average data center facility life, the average right now is 14 years. Can you imagine 14 years ago? What year was that? 2007 or 1990, 1997? I just had my my daughter. Okay, yeah. did we know what these iPhone, you know, uh, mobile smartphones, yeah. the connectivity, that the data Massive explosions? Racks, we, I mean, there's yeah. big Cisco routers. We, we, we're now three com routers, but you know, there's yeah. no way 14 years ago CIOs, as brilliant as they are, could have predicted what the IT load, what the business right. requirements. We've gone through two recessions. Okay, right. are they being acquired? Are they not being acquired? Or are they or are they acquiring? Yeah. How do you under avoid under provisioning or and over provisioning? The, the the future is a modular data center. Okay where you are timing the purchasing, the planning, the deployment, the ongoing operations, and the retirement of, those, of those, that IT infrastructure along with your facilities. They can't be separated. IT moves at too fast of a speed, and you're left with under or over provisioned aged brittle infrastructure. So they'll be timed, whether that's on-premises or whether that's off-premises uh, in, a, in a service provider environment, both the data center and the IT will become integrated. Data center being redefined. Glenn Keels, thank you for coming inside the cube. Thank I know you. you got to run. We got a next guest coming up. Appreciate it. Thanks so much for your thank time. You. Good luck in your uh, panel. Glenn Keels, the worldwide marketing leader at HP around Ecopod, an innovation that is really compelling. Um, I love it. I think it's the Thanks. future of the data center. To me, it reminds me of the old days of the servers with all those different subsystems all prepackaged. So prepackaged Ecopods will be the future of data centers. So it's exciting.